I have uh, done my homework to find out if Iowa is going to be committed to do whatever is necessary within the rules and regulations to be comparable with the winners in the Big Ten. I have been assured that this will take place. Therefore, I am exceptionally happy to accept the job as head football coach here. This is a KCRG TV9 sports special. What a ride. 20 years with Hayden Fry. Hello, everyone. Seems like every other year a new coach signs on at a school and we hear about the beginning of a new era. Few of those ever develop into eras, but tonight we stop to look back at what truly was an era. Hayden Fry's 20 years as the head football coach at Iowa. The man turned around a program that had been mired in mediocrity or worse, longer than Hawk fans want to remember. He put Iowa football back on the map. But 20 years after he took the job, he has decided to retire. He ended all the speculation about his future at an afternoon news conference. All the people that uh, gave me an opportunity to spend 20 years as a member of the Hawkeye family, I, I could never repay them. Man, 47 years, I never had to do this. As you can see, this is very difficult for me. It's the only thing I've ever done. But I got good reasons for doing it now. But for me, at my age, uh, this is the only time I can see to give Bob Bowlesby time to interview top candidates and get the staff in place to have a chance to really do a good job recruiting. Do you have one that describes this moment? Before Fry arrived, Iowa had suffered through 17 non-winning seasons. Bump Elliott, who had already hired and fired his two predecessors, knew he had to find the right man, and he believed Hayden Fry was that person. Fry had turned around programs at SMU and North Texas State. As Bump told me, Fry had everything he wanted, a winning tradition, a ready-made staff, and Hayden was also an athletic director, so he knew what Bump's job was all about. As it turned out, Hayden was the first man Bump interviewed for the job. And he was a very convincing person and an outstanding speaker and uh, obviously a good reputation. Uh, he was head and shoulders above anybody else that we uh, interviewed, and I would, wouldn't even mention who we interviewed, but he, uh, he to me, could do the job at Iowa if, we're, if a job was ever going to be done. We just stick to our knit, and we're going to get that winning season. And the building years, there wasn't any doubt in anybody's minds at that time uh, uh, that he was going to make it go and turn it around. We were uh, five and six and four and seven in those two years, uh, but it was building, and you could tell that things were going the right way. When I think of Hayden Fry, I always think of a, a gentleman who had a plan. He always had a plan, didn't he? He knew what, what he wanted to do. Oh, no question about it. You know, he comes, and I have to admit that he really comes from the, uh, the old Marine Corps. But I'll tell you what, he was a, he's a Marine Corps captain or major or whatever you want to call him. I think he ended up captain. But he liked running the platoons and, and running the, the, the company, so to speak. And, and he lived uh, with that kind of theory and he coached with that theory, but most of all, it was inspirational. Hayden Fry is an inspirational person, you know. The, one of the things, regardless of anything else anybody might say about him, he can communicate to the players. They believe in him, they know what he wants, and they'll do everything they can to make it happen for him. What will Hayden Fry's legacy be here at Iowa? I think uh, building tradition as much as anything else. You said consistency, I say continuity. That he build it so that we can continue to move on with success. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to win. Thank you. And Hayden was a man of his word. By his third season, not only he had, did he have the Hawks winning, 
He had them in the Rose Bowl. The Rose Bowl. Not easy to sum up his 20 years in just a few minutes, but here now a look at some of the highlights of his 20-year ride as the head hawk. But I also believe I know something that maybe some of the other coaches that have been through Iowa didn't know. I think I know what it takes to win and that I'm strong enough to do something about it. Super, I tell you. Isn't that amazing? 15 years. ...to compete with the people that have been winning in the Big Ten. And whatever it takes, we're going to do it as long as it's ethical and within the rules. It was my game plan when I came to Iowa. I told uh, Bump Elliott, I said, you know, this will be the last college coach job I take, win, lose, or draw. And he laughed, and he said, well, you'll be the last football coach I ever hire. And I said, why? And he said, because if you don't make it, they're going to fire me. <laughs> <laughs> but Bump Elliott's selection of Fry to head the Iowa football program turned out to be the best he ever made. Fry immediately began erasing 20 years of football famine. The plan was to replace a losing environment with a winning one. And so we tried to do away with the uniforms, uh, the emblem, uh, everything that was associated with losing and brought in the new things, the new uniforms, the new environment, the way we came onto the field, left the field, the way we uh, tried to get our players to talk to the members of the faculty as well as the news media, to be positive and be proud to be Hawks. And uh, you do that and then you work real hard, good things happen. And good things did happen, quickly. In three short years, Fry had the Hawkeyes winning and going to bowl games. In 1981, they earned their first of three trips to the Rose Bowl. Well, they really have everything planned, and they're just super accommodations, the sunshine, and all those other good things. Coach, last year in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> there have been some big wins in the years that follow. How about 1985, when number one Iowa beat number two Michigan on Rob Howland's game ending field goal? Two weeks later in Columbus, Fry suffered possibly his toughest regular season loss. The Hawkeyes lost their number one ranking during a monsoon in Columbus. We just weren't good enough to, to do it, or maybe Ohio State was better, however you want to word it. It's uh, really a disheartening loss. Two years later, Fry experienced one of his most satisfying regular season victories. Once again, it's Columbus, but this time, Chuck Hart leaved to Marv Cook for a fourth quarter, fourth down touchdown. It gave Iowa its first win in Columbus in 28 years. Uh, to finally win here, you just don't know what that means to me and my coaches. In 1990, the Hawks opened the Big Ten season with a win at Michigan State, and then came back two weeks later to win at Michigan on a thrilling last-minute drive. Can you believe two times in Michigan the same year? <laughs> First time ever. First time an Iowa football team has ever beaten both Michigan State and Michigan on the road. In 1993, Hayden Fry was closing in on a milestone few coaches ever reached. He needed six victories to give him 200 for his college coaching career. Well, just the fact I'm here is an accomplishment, but the fact I could join uh, the 10 or 11 other guys as having been the only ones to win over 200 games in Division I football, yeah, that'd be a great accomplishment. It really would, but I'd, uh, that doesn't mean anything. We win the Big Ten Championship and the Rose Bowl, those two things together. Uh, that holds a lot more value to me than winning 200 games. Fry has taken three Iowa football teams to Pasadena, and three times the Hawks have come up on the short end of things. Yeah, it bugs the hell out of me because I want to do it, and I know we can do it, but everything's got to be right. Despite the Rose Bowl frustration, Hayden Fry looks back at his Iowa career with no regrets. Even the hubbub about his Hawkeye marketing company is just a faint memory. Of course, there were rumors at times of other job offers. 
One Dallas columnist had Fry returning to Texas to take over the Longhorns, to which Fry said, I wouldn't give that guy the time of day down there. And Fred Akers trying to get ready for a big ball game with Oklahoma, that's ridiculous. But all the people around Iowa, I mean, they're just... Just tell them I'm here in Iowa. I'm not going any place. But minutes after the 86 Holiday Bowl victory, Fry said he was considering an offer from Southern Cal. I don't want to sound braggadocious or anything. I've had a lot of opportunities for other jobs since I've been at the University of Iowa. I've never brought up a job before until this USC job came along. A lot of the news media in Iowa acted like I'd really done something wrong. I thought it was a real compliment, a team that had more Heisman Trophy winners, more All-Americans than any school in America, to offer a coach from Iowa the opportunity. We turned the job down. Why? It's because we loved Iowa more. Ready to another level, defense. And Hayden Fry would close out his coaching career at Iowa. Here, a rare glimpse of Fry with his team during halftime of a Michigan game. Now, let's try to score, defense. Try to score. Hey, offense, you're improving. You're getting a lot better. You're getting a lot better. But we've got to put together some drives and keep the ball away from them. We've got to take advantage. Hey, got it, got it. Hayden notched his 200th victory on the last day of the 1993 season. The Hawkeyes beat the Gophers, and for the first time in his Iowa career, he accepted a ride off the field. What a scene it was. Hayden with his wife Shirley and Governor Branstad. Hayden with his players and coaches. And uh, this is a great moment. You, you guys don't know how many great coaches, assistant coaches, and players made a contribution for this trophy. And, uh, you know, I, the first person I think is a good Lord because I believe in the Lord and I think that uh, seeing all the coaches that never got 200 victories that he had an awful lot to do with it. That was certainly not his final victory. A couple of others that stand out. The 21-20 win at Penn State in 1996. Tim Dwight having a Tim Dwight kind of day, and Hayden was as happy as we've ever seen him. John, that's got to be one of the uh, all-time uh, greatest wins because of the timing with this young ball club, and they just keep coming back, coming back, and uh, gee, it's great to win here at Penn State. You know, not, not too many folks win here. Hayden Fry is the dean of Big Ten football coaches. Despite great success at Iowa, he feels his work is not yet done. However, the question he's beginning to hear more often, how much longer will he keep it up? John, as long as I'm healthy and we're winning and everyone is pleased, I, I, I'd like to continue to coach as long as I can, say to age 70. On the other hand, with all of the problems going on in intercollegiate athletics today, there are a lot of coaches like me that are taking a deep look at the future because of the way the NCAA is going on rules and regulations and the cutbacks, uh, who knows? We'll just have to play beer. Those were his thoughts in 1993. By 1997, the retirement question would not go away, and Hayden addressed it in his best style. Uh, I can't tell you when I will leave, surrender, retire, uh, disappear in the mountains. If it gets time that I'm not doing the job and they want to tell me goodbye, well, I'm going to shake her hand, say thank you, and ride off into the sunset. If I can find an old mule. <laughs> One other time was Hayden carried off the field by his players. That took place after the Hawkeyes beat Washington at the 95 Sun Bowl. One thing about Hayden, he spoke his mind, and a look back at his career would not be complete without a couple of outbursts. And, but I just, I will not tolerate, I will not accept people thinking that I'm a liar, insinuating that I wasn't trying to win the ball game. If I wasn't trying to win it, I would tell you. It's that simple. I was going for a tie. But that wasn't what it was. We were trying to win. That's important to me. I'm a man of, of ethics. I always have been and always will. And I'm not going to stand for somebody in the news media to write garbage. It's not correct. Is that... Uh... That's it. He's got a trial coming up. It'd be stupid for me to say anything else. 
And we're not trying to hide anything from you people. And with that article come out, that just, that's one of the worst things I have ever read in my life. I've been shot at and hit an awful lot of times. And uh, whether I ever publicly admitted it or not, I would imagine the majority of the time it was deserved. You know, that's just part of coaching. The one thing about Hayden, once he got it off his chest, he also buried the hatchet. More to come. Stay with us. Ever had an N21 here? Put it in. I knew that, that uh, what is it, Smokey Joe would read the paper. He's got his pipeline down there because he, uh, he quotes us all the time. And I just said, oh, Smokey Joe's smart, and he's not going to coach him this week for the quarterback sneak. Welcome back. In 20 years, a lot of young men have played for Hayden Fry. They came in as green teenagers and left as mature young men. The ones we talked to have fond memories of the man who they called coach. Um, he was always... Um, uh, kept things in perspective for us, I think. Um, when we were, the funniest thing about Coach Fry was when, you know, when we're getting ready for a big game and we're nervous, he's always joking and, and you know, making things light. And, and then when we're going to a game where we're heavily favored, then he's really cracking the whip. And, and uh, so he's always kind of, whether or not we had a good practice or not, he kind of decided whether we were supposed to have a good practice or not and decided what uh, his temperament's going to be. I think he'll, leave, he'll, he'll, he'll be known as a coach who, uh, did a lot with a team that a lot of team with a lot of teams that didn't have a tremendous amount of talent, mm -hmm. but had a athletes who were willing to work hard and play together, and that's the difference in winning football games. I remember when I first got here, I looked up to the man like a god, you know, and I, I think he I think he deserves that. I mean, he's given a lot of great motivational speeches. I remember and he's told a lot of Texas jokes. I remember. <laughs> oh yeah, he that's one thing he loved to do get in the locker room and he say, man, man. We got to win this ball game. You know, it's just not about who's better. It's about who's emotional, who wants to win. He was incredible. And the, the one thing I remember is uh, in my five years at Iowa, uh -huh. uh, when he would speak to the group, 110, 120 guys, every time I felt like he was talking to me. You know, if he was uh, talking about practice and he'd mention, oh, you know, you, were, you weren't hustling, I'd, he caught me that one time that I walked back to the huddle. You know, he had a great way of uh, communicating to groups. Mm -hmm. And so you felt like he was always talking to you. You know, I don't think uh, a word or, you know, or anything can describe all the memories I have of Coach Fry. You know, he's given me so much. He's given me five years of my life. And, you know, he's brought me up as a person, as an athlete, and as a student. You know, I always describe Coach Fry like this. You know, he's a special man with a special name who does special things for, for people. And, 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 and it's unfortunately, you know, more in our society, they focus on the win-loss column, but he's won way more championships with working with young people. And when you speak a lot to kids and stuff, you always hear the saying that if, if you can have an influence on just one kid's life, mm -hmm. uh, and between Coach Brazier and Coach Fry, I mean, if, just so they know, I'm that guy. I mean, they, because they made a huge influence in my life. With Hayden's departure, the Big Ten certainly loses one of its most colorful and successful coaches. What's in the future? That's coming up. Found out. Do they do half souls up in this country? <laughs> you got boots away. You got boots you haven't worn. <laughs> no, somebody had written about the hold in my boots before, and I decided, well, I'll just put those on. You know, I didn't, no, these are my church boots. I'm T. Who will replace Hayden Fry at Iowa? Scott Sable is live in Iowa City to talk about that. Scott? John Iowa Athletic Director Bob Bowlesby wants to name a new coach sometime in the next two to three weeks, so it won't take long. And he's got a lot of familiar names on his shopping list. Talk about the successor. Uh, Hayden has, has said that he would like it to be someone close to the program. Reality-wise, are there enough candidates close to the program? Well, I, you know, I, I think uh, Bob Stoops comes to mind. That's a name that comes up all the time. Uh, we've got some other assistants that are out there. You know, at one time, I think there was a lot of expectation that Bill Snyder or Barry Alvarez would want to come back to Iowa. Um, given the situations with their teams, the fact that they're in New Year's Day bowl games, uh, the likelihood of that sort of thing happening is really not very high. And we're also going to look at the, the best people we can that, that don't have Iowa ties because I, I just think it's too small a pool otherwise. Will you take a run at Schneider? Well, I, I mean, we'll probably talk, but I don't, I don't know that that's very realistic. Uh, Stoops doesn't have the head coaching experience, and some of the assistants here now don't. Uh, how important is it to you to have head coaching experience? All things being equal, I think you, you like somebody that uh, has done what you want them to do, and, and so uh, you'd like a head coach that's been a head coach. It would be an honor for me uh, to be considered here. Um, I will, uh, 
I'd like to be considered. Um, Bob Bowlesby's opened it up to the staff, and, and I know I'll probably talk to Bob within the next couple of days. In your physical condition, is this something that you want to pursue? I'm not a candidate for, for this job. I, I uh, You know, when you hire a head football coach, you got to have somebody that's going to be there every day with great energy. And I can't say that, I, that that's going to be my situation. Of course, Kansas coach uh, Terry Allen will be considered for this job. He's good friends with Bob Bowles. We grew up right here in Iowa City. And there's a lot of guys, a lot of names that we don't know of yet, like Sonny Lubick of Colorado State, one of the top college uh, coaching prospects in the country right now. John, back to you. And Scott, once again, the time frame to bring a new guy in? He says he'd like to have someone sometime in uh, the next two to three weeks, so this thing's going to move pretty quick. Okay, thank you very much, Scott Sable. You know, when people ask me what I enjoy about my job, the answer is simple, the people I meet. And hands down, one of the most interesting men I've covered in my almost 20 years at KCRG is Hayden Fry. Sure, as a reporter, I was frustrated at times by his secrecy and strict media guidelines. I've sat out there when he was scolding the press and, like Marv Cook, wondered if he was talking to me. But that was such a small part of the man. Hayden was always engaging, spoke his mind, and especially in the early years, rode that emotional roller coaster with the winning and losing. For us, he made great copy. I don't believe he ever came to a Tuesday news conference without knowing exactly what message he wanted to get across. Hayden's always had a plan. As one Big Ten coach told me, Hayden always gave his teams a chance to win. And win they did, like no other teams in Iowa history. And not once during his reign was there an NCAA investigation. Hayden Fry will be the measuring stick of future Iowa football coaches. What he did for Hawkeye football for the university will not soon be matched. The decision to retire has obviously not been easy, but I believe it was the right one. But it's not time for Hayden to ride that old mule into the sunset. It's time to ride it to the old fishing hole or through the hills of northeastern Iowa or wherever he and Shirley want to go. You've earned it, Hayden. And someday when they build a new stadium down there, they should name it after the old coach. And we can nickname it Hayden's Hole and watch Hawkeye teams battle for glory. And we can all think back to those golden days when the man from Odessa roamed the sidelines and coached the Hawkeyes to victory after victory. Have a good one, Hayden. Thanks for joining us. That's truly amazing. He says, you mean that you can read all of that, just listen to the vibrations of the ground? So Indian looks at him and says, no. They ran over me about 30 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> had a great game. We threw a halfback pass for a touchdown right at the end of the game and scored. But they said we were out of the end zone. And then we looked at the game films and we scored. We beat there, eh? Bobby Bowden still laughs about that today. <laughs> I don't really think you get the true message until I walk down the aisle here for the last time. <laughs> <laughs> I walked down the aisle, everyone turned to look. I had a, a large piece of mistletoe on my coattail. <laughs> <laughs>